Uh, I'm super excited to talk with you guys today about strategies for communicating the value of inner source to the C-suite. And as we start this conversation, I think as advocates for inner source and leaders of inner source within your organizations, you have a very clear picture of the value that inner source brings to you and your team. But I'd like to invite you to think about it from an organizational level. And in thinking about it at an organizational level, I have a question to ask, and that is how much of inner source's success is dependent on adoption? 100%. You would get a little bit of inner source value from a little bit of adoption, and you get more inner source value the more there is adoption. You'll often hear people talk about the struggle to get adoption and have people come on board and getting the resources that you need. I'd like to have us look at a couple of data points that impact that adoption from an organizational standpoint. So going to first the state of the inner source report, uh, thank you to the comments for putting that out. It's a wonderful document. If you look at the last four reports running, the lead obstacle for inner source adoption is the lack of middle management and executive sponsorship. It's the number one barrier to getting adoption within the organization. Um, and considering that this is a change and transformation about how you do business and looking at business, I looked at an organization called ProSci, which is a leading change management org. Uh, globally, they've been putting out reports since 1988. Interestingly, it started with an engineer out of Bell Labs. And every single report that they have done since 1988 has shown that the number one contributor to success for a change initiative in your organization is active and visible sponsorship. So it can't be overstated how important engagement with the C-suite is. And today I wanna to share with you four strategies for you to get more C-suite and senior level executive sponsorship for your own inner source initiative. Those four strategies are define the value, position the story, asks and activities, and build a team. Let's start with build, let's start with define the value. So when you think about the C-suite and what they are thinking about, right? It's important to think about your audience. It's important to think about what are they focused on? They are focused on the big picture. They're looking at organizational impact. So you'll often hear them talk about things like CapEx and OpEx, and a recession and what's happening with the inflation rates. They're looking at global disruptions that are impacting supply chain and their manufacturing and their fabrication. And uh, they're looking at the great resignation and how they can acquire the best talent. They're looking at what's gonna happen with this industry in five years, in 10 years. How can I gain more market share? How are my products performing? Do we have a strong portfolio? Do we need to add a different piece to it? They have some big, big things that they're looking at and each and every one of them they have to be and are accountable to their stakeholders for whether they're public and answering to the shareholders about their share price or it's private and they're talking to their stakeholders about how they are as a leader and how they're guiding the organization to a better place uh, they're thinking big picture additionally they're thinking bottom line two favorite frames that senior leaders are often <laughs> looking at is How's our revenue? How's our profit? And how are we doing and controlling our cost and our costs or decreasing our costs, right? The bottom line is super important to these leaders. And so your ability to make a connection with inner source to the big picture, the organizational picture, is going to be critical to getting them engaged and participating in the inner source initiative and being an active and visible presence. In order to figure out what is on the forefront of their mind, most organizations have corporate goals. They have three to five bullet points that they're either trying to address this year, or it's their five-year goal or their 10-year goal, or some combination thereof. And I'd like to uh, invite you to look at that at your organization. Typically, you're going to find a bullet point that talks about HR. Uh, and it will be something like, we want to enhance the culture, or we want to lead talent acquisition in our industry, or we want to retain more um, employees and engage more with our employees and that sort of thing. 
And you may be wondering why this would be a corporate goal and what this has to do with Intersource. Um, I assure you, it's a very, very important component. And let me tell you the story. So your senior HR leader is looking at serious costs within employment. Specifically, I'm going to cite in the U.S., voluntary turnover costs business a trillion dollars a year. That's a big impact. And that, and that impacts how the business runs. They want to retain talent. Now, that's not even considering your uh, institutional knowledge that leaves when people voluntarily leave the organization. So in thinking about that value and in thinking about the five to 10 years as your senior leaders do, they're going to be asking themselves questions about how to acquire the best talent in five to 10 years. Well, in 2030, 44% of your workforce is going to be Gen Z. And in order to attract the best talent, you need to be thinking about what does the best talent look for in a work environment? If you look at the research for Gen Z, they want to be in a collaborative workspace. They want to be in a collaborative workspace. It's very, very important to them. And as we all know, InnerSource is an incredible empowerment for a collaborative workspace. The openness and transparency that InnerSource offers enables people to friction, frictionlessly move from one space to another and engage in various projects. It offers diverse opportunity within your organization. That's an incredible value to your organization and to the employee themselves. Imagine what you might be able to do in talking about how that changes life for your development teams. In fact, I think we have speakers later on who are going to talk about the developer experience and the improvement of that because of their engagement with Intersource. Just something to consider in terms of how you can connect and how you can build bridges with your C-suite and get them engaged in promoting Intersource for your organization. The next point I wanna talk about is positioning the story. So when you have a C-suite audience, you wanna make sure that you are talking, um, that your presentations are clear and simple. You don't wanna use small font. You wanna keep your font very big. Uh, if you are under 20 point font, you probably have too many words on your slide. You wanna make sure that it's very big picture, very high level. And in framing stories, the best practice or one of the best practices that I have found is three parts. You start with why. Um, thinking back to Mary's uh, opening, why is important? What is happening in this setting? How are the characters? Um, who are the characters that are involved with this? How is that working for them? And specifically, what is the conflict? What's the conflict here? What's the problem that we're trying to address? There are many, many problems. It's not, it's important to think of it as what problem are they needing solved? And how does your, how does your project uh, solve that, that issue? How does it solve their problem, the C-suite's problem? How are those two connected? We already know what the what is. What is the big idea? We're all here to discuss inner source and its impact within organizations. And then how, how do those connect? How do you make that connection? How does Intersource change a problem, solve a problem, minimize a problem that they're facing within the organization today? I'd like to give another example. When you think about C-suite, I'm going to point out two particular roles. One is the CFO and your other is going to be your CIO. Your CIO is responsible for all the tech in the company. It's a big job. There's a lot of weight to it. And one of the big concerns that they have is data security. In fact, if you look at predictions for 2025, they're looking at about $10 trillion worth of cost coming from cyber crimes. It's grown 10% in the last year. And the average data breach costs over $4 million to a company. It's a big topic. Not to mention the fact that 90% of a company's value is tied up in its IP. And so it is the primary target for these cybercrime groups. These are big concerning issues that your C-suite is thinking about and trying to position. And as the CIO, they are responsible for that threat surface, which includes the people and the tools, software, hardware, infrastructure, uh, cloud service providers, those components, they're responsible if there's a breach. And of course, you can look at that $4 million and think your CFO is certainly going to pay attention to that. So. 
I um, recently heard of a global pharmaceutical company that was leveraging Intersource, and as Intersource does, it brought people together. People from across the organization started talking, they started looking at tools that were being used in service providers, and lo and behold, as they looked at these service providers, they realized that they were using more service providers than they needed to. In fact, they could probably, and they did, they removed one altogether. And with what they had, they were still able to, uh, they were able to tighten up how they operated with just a few of the tools and remove one service provider. That service provider cost the organization half a million dollars. That's half a million dollars that they can now put towards something that benefits the organization. They could reinvest in Intersource. Think of what you could do with that kind of reinvestment because of what it was able to save the organization. That's a huge talking point. Additionally, for the CIO, that decreased the threat surface that they had to face. It decreased the resources that they had to put to support that particular tool. So very, very impactful story. And I'm sure that as you think about uh, your own inner source efforts and how you are executing them, what impact that's making to the organization as a whole. The next point I want to talk about is asks and activities. So when you talk to a C-suite uh, executive, their time is precious. They're very busy. They're moving around quite a bit. Um, and you need to have a promotion plan for your initiative. It needs to be promoted within your organization. And specifically, you need that C-suite executive to carry that message. You need them to be present and publicly supporting the work that you're doing and the impact that it's making to the organization as a whole. So you want them to speak up in things like town halls or the uh, quarterly roundup or the board meeting, or if there's a special interdepartmental leadership meeting, you want them to present about your work in Intersource. And it's very important that they can and that they know that that's expected of them. Um, you also want them to be a part of your work. You want them to see the work that's being done to be a part of that group. You want them to recognize those people who are contributing. Earlier on, um, Russ and Daniel pointed out great contributors who are making tremendous impact in the inner source community. You want your senior leadership to say, great job, really out running, doing a phenomenal job. I'm so excited to have so-and-so here with us. They've just really been doing an amazing job for inner source and here's the impact that they have created. These are really critical and important things for the C-suite to provide to the Intersource initiative. In order to do that, you have to have a promotion plan that's clear about what, when you need them. You need to be clear about your ask to them. So there's an expectation of when you need them to show up to provide these things. And lastly, and this is very important, you want to support your sponsor. As I mentioned earlier, they're very busy, they're moving around, equipping them with a, I hate to say it, a beautiful deck or talking points or a brief, this is where a Marcoms professional would be very beneficial to help support them as they are your champion and as they convey this message across your organization. So you wanna make sure that they're supported and that this lift, you guys are together and working on it and that they're equipped to do this successfully. The last point and strategy is to build a team. I know this is a common theme for a lot of people here. Um, and I've referenced a couple of different examples. So when you think about this, for example, with HR, an HR person may be able to tell you the stats and the efforts that they're doing to improve retention. What has that done? What has your inner source initiative done for your department? What value is it driving there? There may be opportunity that they could provide an insight they could provide that strengthens your case. Uh, I spoke about finance a little bit later. If you have a financial analyst who can talk to you about the bottom line and you can talk about numbers that strengthens your case with the C-suite, it gets them involved and engaged and intrigued about that. If you can have a Marcoms person to provide the materials necessary to support your sponsor and to support your initiative internally about what work is going into it and the impact that you're having, those are huge wins. So I encourage you to go broad in your promotion and look for all sorts of different diverse talent outside of just um, your your specific department. There's a lot of people who benefit from Intersource. It is definitely more than just code, it is about the people. And include your sponsor on the team. They're a part of the team. They're an important part. In fact, 
they're the number one uh, indicator for success is their visible and active participation. So I hope that these strategies have been helpful for you today. I certainly appreciate the opportunity to speak with you and I'm happy to take any questions you may have.